Our goal is simple, to win the big fight between antibiotics and resistant bacteria. We aim to rid of antibiotic resistant bacteria with our product. Our product works to cut out the antibiotic resistant gene in a specific strain of bacteria, so the strain will no longer be resistant to antibiotics. Drug-resistant tuberculosis is typically caused by misused medication. Examples include patients who do not follow treatments as prescribed either over or under use, providers who prescribe the wrong treatment, and poor quality medications. Preventing drug-resistant tuberculosis involves patients and providers understanding appropriate drug use, following recommended treatments, close monitoring of patients throughout treatment plans, and avoiding exposure to drug-resistant TB. When contracted, treating and curing drug-resistant TB is complicated, and inappropriate management can have life-threatening results. Existing treatment options involve administering second-line or reserve medications, the downside being that they are generally more costly, have greater side effects, and are required to be taken for a greater length of time. Another option is the use of complementary first-line drugs that treat infection at different stages of the replication cycle. Unfortunately, the use of complementary drugs has led to the development of multi-drug and extensively drug-resistant strains of TB. At best, current treatment options are costly and ineffective. At worst, they are potentially lethal. The gene we are targeting is the RPOB gene in mycobacterium tuberculosis. This gene specifically affects antibiotic resistance in tuberculosis due to the amount of point mutations that happen in this region. Shown here is the RPOB gene in mycobacterium tuberculosis. The rifampin resistance determining region, or RRDR, is where mutations typically occur. This region consists of 81 base pairs and runs through codons 507 to 533. The RPOB gene encodes the beta subunit of RNA polymerase, so RNA polymerase can transcribe the genome. In mycobacterium tuberculosis, antibiotic resistance is created when there is a point mutation in the RPOB gene. To treat tuberculosis, a drug called rifampin is used, which causes inhibition of transcription by binding to the beta subunit of RNA polymerase, as shown. Rifampin binds to the beta subunit, causing transcription of the genome to halt, and thus tuberculosis is treated. If the RPOB gene develops a mutation, it becomes resistant to antibiotics. Rifampin then cannot bind to the beta subunit of RNA polymerase. Transcription would take place, and tuberculosis would not be treated. To conquer antibiotic resistance, we could use more drugs, or experiment with an awesome technique that goes by the name of CRISPR. What's CRISPR? Do you immediately think of bacon? Well, let's explore it. So how does CRISPR work? Well, the CRISPR-Cas9 system has two main functions, editing genes by modification and cutting or deactivating genes. The CRISPR-Cas9 system can be directed to specific locations of the genome by a short RNA search string. This allows researchers to explain the relationship between genetic variations and biological phenotypes and to clarify the function and organization of the genome at the system level. CRISPR allows for the editing of functions in DNA sequences within the genome. These techniques are able to co-localize RNA, DNA, and proteins, which in turn will grant control over cellular organization, regulation, and behavior. We can edit the RPOB gene to code for a different enzyme that is more susceptible to inhibition by common antibiotics. In TB, RNA polymerase is the active site, which is the binding site for rifampin. By cutting and deactivating a gene, CRISPR would stop RNA polymerase at the genetic level before transcription and translation can even occur. Without these processes, TB can transcribe genes, essentially inactivating the RPOB gene. This figure shows how genome editing applications can repair DNA. In Part A, the DNA double strand breaks are repaired by non-homologous end joining or homology directed repair. In the non-homologous end joining pathway, Ku heterodimers are bound to double strand break ends to serve as the framework in repairing proteins, 
and dowels are presented when the complementary strands are resectioned in misaligned repair, which will lead to frame shift mutations and gene knockout. In homology directed repair, RAD5 win proteins bind to double strand break ends and recruit accessory factors that express genomic recombination. Bypassing the sister chromatids eases the introduction of genetic modifications. In Part B, the zinc finger proteins and transcription activator-like effectors are naturally occurring DNA binding domains that can target specific sequences. Zinc finger domains can recognize three base pairs of DNA, while transcription activators-like effectors can identify one. These binding proteins can be fused to the focal endonuclease to create site-specific nucleases. Part C shows that the Cas9 nuclease from CRISPR focuses on specific DNA sequences by the guide sequence on its guide RNA, which directly base pairs with DNA. Binding of protospacer adjacent motifs directs Cas9 mediated double strand breaks. Now that you understand how CRISPR generally works, how will all of that information apply directly to mycobacterium tuberculosis? Don't worry, we're almost done. This is our Cas9 RNA protein complex. Uh, yeah, RNA protein complex. So what this is, we're gonna, this RNA over here is a complement to the DNA in our RPOB gene in mycobacterium tuberculosis. So what's gonna happen is Cas9 has helicase activity, which is gonna unwind the DNA um, at the gene that we're looking for, and it's gonna run it through and match it once it finds the complementary sequence to the RNA inside the gene. And once it binds to the RNA, these little thingies right here um, have nuclease activity. So they're gonna nick the gene on both strands. This nick is gonna make essentially a double-stranded break in the DNA, something like that. Now this double-stranded break is repaired by either non-homologous end joining or homology direct repair. However, these both are very prone to errors now, and they could make a random insertion, or they could delete a bunch of uh, a bunch of nucleotides in the sequence. These deletions will cause the gene to be inactivated for the most part. Now, what we could also do to ensure an activation is insert um, our own copy of DNA into one of the genes, say right here. Um, this could be any sort of things, but um, our best idea would be a bunch of stop codons to inhibit transcription and prevent the protein uh, from forming in the first place. Now, um, if you can't make RNA polymerase, then you can't transcribe and you can't make any proteins that need, the cell needs to function. So the cell would die. We're worth investing in because we've done the research, have the knowledge and motivation to get rid of antibiotic resistance for good. Now, always remember how CRISPR works. Just kidding. But really, go science.